Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Uh, today's topic. I'm going to get right into the class. I got quite a bit that I want to go through. Uh, the name of this class is called The Enemy From Without and From Within. The Enemy From Without and From Within. Okay. Now, as I go through this class, I'm going to explain what this is talking about. I'm going to actually just give you a little bit of information as to why I entitled it the way I entitled it. The enemy from without, meaning enemies that are on the outside of the nation of Israel, that's, all, that's looking to overthrow the plans of the Lord. And then you have enemies within the nation of Israel, the Israelites, who are, who are bound for destruction. Their mission is to also do like the enemies on the outside and to bring Israel to naught. That's their objective. So the enemy from without are talking about our natural enemies, and then we have enemies from within, which are enemies that are internal, undercover brothers, so you can understand, undercover sisters, as you can under so you can understand. Um, I want to start off with um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the scripture because that's it's something that I just I marked it and I said I want to make a mention of it. And the reason why I want to make mention of it is because I want you to understand how special each and every one of us are, all of us, even for the brother that just walked in the door to the to the old heads of us. We all have that equal special uh, speciality with the most high. And it's important for us to remember that it's important for us to know that it's important for us to understand that when we deal with each other. OK. A lot of y'all know that I got a significant amount of years in this truth. And a brother that's just coming in the door yesterday is just as important to the most high as I am. Okay, so that's something that we have to keep in mind because we don't know who the Lord is bringing in. And oftentimes we think that our tenure in this truth gives us a pass to mistreat the brothers that just came into the door or mistreat the sister that just came in the door. And you don't know who these people are. So we have to, I'm, this is not, thank God, this is not a pervasive spirit in IUIC. But I'm just saying that this is something sometimes people get to think this way. They get some position and they think they could just abuse the people. And you don't know who you're dealing with. Okay, I'm going to show you that. Um, let's get it. Jeremiah, watch this now. because This is going to be kind of deep. Just this little passage that I'm going to get. And another day I'm going to go a little deeper into it. But I just want to just give you just a little nugget of a little bit of deepness. And then I'm going to get back to the basics. And the reason why the basics are important is because this, this is what's going to get us the kingdom. The scriptures say that we have to, uh, uh, by the milk, that we have to desire the sincere milk of the word. Okay? That's how we're going to, that's how we're going to get our foundation set. Oftentimes we look for the deep things and then our foundation is weak and then you wonder why brothers and sisters are falling out of the truth because they never really got the the deep basics down pat so that's the reason why i'm electing 
to go over more basic things as opposed to the deep things. But every now and then I'm going to throw out a nugget of deepness. Y'all all right? I'm going to give you a little, a little nugget now. Just a little nugget. Jeremiah chapter 17 and uh, verse 1. Jeremiah Jer 17 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. This is the prophet Jeremiah writing this down. The most I told, told Jeremiah to write this down. Give me chapter 1. Chapter 1. Follow me now. Je Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse uh, 5, I think it is. Let Jer me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hang on. Hang on. I'm kind of do. I'm, I'm building up. I'm building up. Yeah, I might want something before that. Let me just give me a second. Uh, read verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, "Before he said, uh, then the word of the Lord came before me. Me is Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah. Read, before I formed thee, before I formed you, Jeremiah, in the womb, before I formed you in the womb, Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew you, meaning that you existed before you was put inside your mother's womb." And before thou camest forth, and before you came forth out of your mother's womb, out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I sanctified you. I ordained you. I sanctified you. I cleaned you up. I built you. I made, I purposed you. Go ahead. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see that? So the most high has the spirits. The Most High has all of the spirits on us. He knows about us from generation to generation. That's what I'm saying. That's the point that I'm making. I'm going to touch that subject on another time. But you've been here many times before. That's the point that I'm making. I'm making that, re I'm making that point to, to, again, press upon you that you could be Jeremiah. You could be Isaiah. You could be Daniel. So it would be foolish for me. To deal with you in a Negro way. Not realizing that you could be who we reading about. So we have to take that serious. So whenever there's issues between us, I'm trying to make amends with my brothers right away. I'm trying to make amends with my sisters right away. These are your Abigail, so you can understand. The good sisters that you read about in the scriptures, Phoebe. That's what the Most High is letting us know. Okay? Now... Uh, give me Jeremiah 17 where I was at Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 1 the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron I'm sorry uh, what did I say 17 and 4 yeah 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 you're right you're right continue I'm sorry the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron so the most I told Jeremiah to write this down about the Israelites Go ahead. And with the point of a diamond. He said the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, right? That's what it said? Yes, sir. With a pen of iron. Go ahead. And, and, with, with, the, and with the point of a diamond. And with the point of a diamond, meaning that it was engraved. That's how evil we were to the Israelites. That, I mean, to the prophets. That's what they were trying to kill Jeremiah. They were trying to kill the prophets. All kind of evil was going on during, around this time. But the Most High said, I want you to write the sin of Judah down. Read it again. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron mm -hmm. and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whistled, whilst, whilst their children remembered their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. That was the evil sin that we were doing. We were worshiping other gods. We wanted to follow the other nations. And the Most High told Jeremiah to write that down. So Jeremiah was in the truth all the way up to the end. I'm going to show you something. Read. Verse 3. O my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. I want you all to really look at verse 3. Read it again. O my mountain in the field, 
I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. So the Most High was letting Jeremiah know that he was getting ready to tear Israel up. He was getting ready to have Israel to lose everything. Now listen to what he's going to say in this fourth verse. Verse 4, and thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage. Did that happen to Jeremiah? Literally. Did that happen to literal Jeremiah? So what is the most high saying? He's saying that, you, he said, in this lifetime, you're not going to lose it, but you're going to come back. And when you come back, you're going to be a Negro, so you can understand. So what is these people talking about regeneration ain't in the Bible? Give me Exodus 34 and 7. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 7. Keeping mercy for thy thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will be. And it, that will by no means. By no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. It's the third and the fourth generation is talking about us coming back in regeneration. The reason why I said the third and the fourth generation because we come back every third and fourth generation. Okay, that's how you pay for the sins of your fathers. Now, I heard an Edomite try to say that we making this up like. The Bible is not talking about this. And when you're dealing with an enemy, an enemy will try to get inside your head to get you to agree with them to your own detriment. The reason why they don't want us to know that we've come, that we've been here many times before, because if you really think about it, if, you, if we could pull our heads out of the Baptist church for a few minutes and understand what I'm about to say. When you read in Deuteronomy, give me that, give me that. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Our enemies want us to totally misunderstand that verse completely to the point where they have written what they, what they call New International Version Bibles and they have totally bastardized that scripture on purpose. They have taken that scripture where it says that the Lord shall bring thee into bondage again. That's what the, that's what the uh, Egypt is, bondage. That was recorded in the fifth book of the Bible, which is Deuteronomy. The book of Exodus was when we came out of Egypt. So the reason why I use the term again, read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Shall bring the Israelites into Egypt again, meaning back into bondage again, because we just came out of the house of bondage. That's what, he's, that's what Exodus 20th chapter, verse 2 tells you. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That was recorded in the second book of the Bible. Here we in the fifth book, and Moses is telling us that if we didn't keep the commandments of the Lord, the Most High will bring us back into bondage, but this time you're going to get there on ships. That verse is identifying who the Israelites are. They don't want the world to know that they have been mistreating the children of Israel, especially the blacks in this country. They are going to seriously pay for, the, for them dealing with how they dealt with us. And they are trying to get out of that. And they want us to side with them. You're going to set up your so-called apologetics, your Christian programs, and try to recruit black folk. I can't, even think of, I can't even think of something more disrespectful than to go to the people that my forefathers have murdered your forefathers. And then I'm going to come to you and get you to side with me against the people that are actually trying to help and liberate you from the destruction that I caused. You have, to have a, you have to have a certain kind of disdain, a certain type of disrespect, a certain type of, of absolute hatred to, to be bold enough to come before the children of slaves and tell them, side with me, side with the slave master, and all of the riches that I've gotten is because my forefathers raped and murdered your forefathers, but I expect you to be dumb enough 
to follow what I say against your own people that's trying to show you facts. That is what you call the utmost disrespect. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring the Israelites into Egypt again. The, the reason why I wanted to go to this verse and chapter is because of the word thee. Read it again. And the Lord. Keep in context with what I said about Jeremiah. The and, Bible said in, in, in Jeremiah 17, it said, and thou, even thyself, meaning you, Jeremiah, you shall discontinue from your heritage. That did not happen to the prophet Jeremiah. So when he said thou, meaning you, meaning that in generations to come, you're going to be dumber than an ox and an ass. And you're going to have to come through these doors and get the knowledge like the book of Malachi talked about. And he will bring, he, and he will bring the, the fathers to their, to, he will bring the, the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, meaning the Bible. He's going to return our Bible back to us. That's what he's saying to Jeremiah here. So just like it's saying here, and thou, even thyself shall discontinue, that didn't happen to Jeremiah in this generation there. Just like when we read in Exodus 34, it says, did you finish reading that in Exodus 34? Yeah, visiting the iniquities. Yes, sir. Read it again. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon are, the children. If we are guilty of breaking God's laws, he will visit the punishment. That's what it means when they're visiting the iniquity. Go ahead. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Why I said the fathers? Because that's how you got here, through your father's seed. It's no accident as to the reason why this society looks to kill the black man, look to kill his seed, look to destroy the seed line, the lineage. They'll pop your woman all day long because every seed that she has by them, they're only reproducing themselves. Mm -hmm. It is us that they have to get rid of. We're the ones that bring the nation back. It is your seed. That's the reason why the Bible is clear telling you that you're going to come through your father's line. That's the reason why when you read about Christ, it gives you the genes of Jesus. The generations of Jesus Christ. It's letting you know the genes that he came from. That's why they call him the son of David. Because he came from the penis. So you can understand. I'm going to say it that way. Because I, I like to make so-called Christians mad as hell. That's how he came here. From the sperm line. Read it again. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity trans and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Unto the third and the fourth generation. Because your first generation will be your, your son. That will be your first generation. Your second generation will be your grandson. So you can understand. You're still alive, usually, to see your son and your grandson. But in the third generation, you might be here or you might be gone. And if you're still here by the time you get to your great-grandson, then when your great-great-grandson come out, chances are you're off the scene. And you come back through that. You come back through that son. That's what the Bible is saying. And if you don't have any children, he'll bring your seed through your other brothers. Because the Most High controls the spirits. It's like he's controlling Jeremiah's spirit. Just like he controls all of us. So you ain't getting rid of the nation of Israel regardless of what you do. So you can understand clearly what I'm saying. If there's one Israelite left on this planet, that one Israelite could bring back all 12 tribes. That's, that's how potent we are. <laughs> Put it that way. They ain't getting rid of that. Super sperm. huh? Can you dig it? <laughs> One of the hip hop records that I have. That I have hey, in the old there was a when there was, <laughs> wasn't there a time when uh, Moses said himself was talking about. Well, it was the Most High was saying that he would destroy everything and start over. Yeah, with you the know? rocks. Right. 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 Uh, Israel made Moses made the Most High Moses said, "Move aside. I'll tear all them up and I'll start the nation of Israel with rocks." So the nation of Israel ain't going nowhere. That's why it records that in the book of Jeremiah 31, I think it is. And he says, 
that the seed of Israel is going to always be here. As long as the sun and the moon and the stars is up there, is the seed of Israel will be on this planet. So we ain't going no place. Okay? As Jeremiah 31, tell them where it's at. Just just, just I see brothers taking notes. Jeremiah 31, so you know the nation of Israel ain't going nowhere. So no matter how many uh, sterilization tactics they try on us, no matter how much that they try to inject us with different poisons and all that to kill our seed, you're not stopping the nation of Israel at all. Okay? You found it? Jeremiah 31, and I think it's 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day. The Lord is the one that put the sun up there and put the moon up there. That's the Almighty. That's the Most High. Go ahead. Well, let's see. Let's see what He said. In the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea with the waves thereof. The but, Lord of Hosts is His name. Verse thirty-six. Mm -hmm. If those ordinances depart from before me, if those ordinances depart from before me, the ordinances mean the moon, the stars, the sun. If those, if those ordinances leave. Say of the Lord, then the seed of Israel, then the what? The seed of Israel, then the what? The seed of Israel, the sperm of Israel. That's what it's talking about, straight up. Then the sperm of Israel, the sperm of Jacob. Go ahead. Also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So you hear that? So when you go outside, all you got to do is look up and you know the super sperm in Israel is still here. Y'all all right? Can y'all dig it? <laughs> okay, so they're not stopping nothing. They ain't stopping the damn thing. Only thing that's gonna stop is their heart. That's what's gonna stop. Now, let's go back to where I was at. All praise to the most high. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight and verse sixty eight. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So who is the thee that the most that the most high was speaking through Moses? He was talking to the Israelites. Listen to what Moses said to Israel. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee. And the Lord shall bring you Israelites. Into Egypt again with ships. Did the Israelites that Moses spoke to, did they go on slave ships? No. That prophecy did not come to pass till all the way up to the 14, 15, and 1600s. A.D. after Christ. This was spoken thousands of years before Christ even came on the scene in the physical body, so you can understand. And the Most High said what? Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord shall bring the Israelites into bondage a second time, but this time you're going to get to this bondage on ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. And how is and how is it that, and how is this going to be done? By the way whereof I spake unto thee, meaning the, exactly the way it's recorded in Deuteronomy the twenty eighth chapter is the way it's going to happen. The yokes of iron, so you can understand, is is the way I spake unto thee. The our children being sold and taken from us is by the way I spake unto thee. That's what that's talking about. All of the different things that you read about in Deuteronomy the twenty eighth chapter. Happened exactly the way Moses said. Read that statement again. By the way. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Th th you were gonna, you're going to go on slave ships the, the exact way that I'm reading it to you. By the way I'm bringing it out to you. That's how the slave trade is going to be. The, our women being raped. Our sons and daughters being raped. Our children being shackled up and put with yokes of iron on their necks. That's in here. The way Moses recorded it. That did not happen to the Israelites that was in the wilderness with Moses at all. So what is the Bible telling you? That you're going to come through many generations and this is going to happen. That's what uh, Luke was talking about. Give me that, Luke. I'm just giving you all some basics. Kind of deep, but giving you all some basics. And I'm going to get on with the lesson. Luke 21 verse 24. No, 22. Who's new in here? Anybody's new? Okay, one brother. Anybody else? Okay, all praises to the Most High. Well, we're gonna deal with you. You, you, welcome home. I tell you that much. Welcome home. Okay, you made it, and that's how that lets you know how special you are. You've made it. There's so many traps for a new brother to get caught up in, and the Lord has selected you and pulled you through all that filth to get you right where you are. To give you, not what I have to say, give you the Bible, which is 
your book. Okay? Read. Uh, twenty. Start with the 22nd verse. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 21 and verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. Start with 20. Start with uh, what, what chapter For, you in? You're uh, in Luke 21? Yeah. Start with when you shall see Jerusalem. Yes, sir. 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem, compass with army. This is Christ coming on the scene, telling the Israelites that the time for the judgments that Moses wrote down was about to come down on us. This is Christ getting ready to back up what we just read. Christ now. You're talking about in the Roman Empire. This that we were reading here was right after Egypt. Look at all those thousands of years between them before this prophecy was going to actually take place. Read. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. And when you shall see Jerusalem surrounded by the Roman armies. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then know that the desolation is near. Why is he saying the desolation? Because it's a desolation that we knew about. That's the reason. And, and he didn't say that just know that a desolation because everybody was like, well, what is he talking about? But if you say the desolation, it has to, it's making reference to something that we know about. The desolation that you read about in Daniel, for instance. The, 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 the desolation that you read about in Psalms when the heathens came in and destroyed our temples. That's what it's talking about here. That's, what it, that's why it's using the. The means particular. Read that again. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then know that the desolation that you've been hearing the prophets talk about is near. Go ahead. Verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. It said, and they which be what? Read that statement again. Then let them which are in Judea. Then let the Israelites that are in Judea. This is talking about the southern kingdom. Because at this time, the nation of Israel was split in two parts. You had the northern kingdom, which was, which was the northern tribes, which was Simeon, Levi, uh, Ephraim, uh, Ephraim, Manasseh, Manasseh Dad, Reuben. the ones that you called the Hispanics. <laughs> Those are the ones. But they weren't called. They were the northern kingdom there. Ain't no such thing as Hispanic. These were the Israelites that was, that, was, that was called the northern kingdom. Puerto Ricans and all of that. Read that statement again. Then let them which are in Judea. Then let them which are in Judea. That's, that's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, so you can understand. That's the, the three tribes primarily that was still in Jerusalem at this time. The reason why it's making a point about the other tribes being scattered abroad was because after we were, after, um, what was it, Babylon? I, I was... The, when we were given, uh, after Babylon, Persia came in and gave liberty, to, gave liberty to the Israelites. And northern kingdom primarily said, we're going to go into a further country where never mankind dwelt. And they entered into the Euphrates and ended up over to the Americas and Puerto Rico and all of that. That's in the, that's in the book of Ezra, second Ezra. Okay? And it gives the geographic route in the Bible. And the history books confirm that. Okay, so so the, the northern tribes was already scattered abroad. The only tribes that was primarily in, Ju in Jerusalem at this time was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which is known as the southern kingdom. Everybody's with me? Read that again. Luke chapter 21 and verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea. Then let the Jews, meaning the, the, the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi primarily, let them flee to the mountains, flee deeper into Africa. Because Jerusalem is in Africa, so you can understand. All of that was part of, when you say the land of Canaan, Canaan is talking about Africa. So there's, um, the, the point that I'm really making, that there is no such thing as the Middle East. That's a term that they use to separate the land and say, no, those are not the black people. We're going to make up a group of people called Jews and going to say, these are Middle Eastern. Ain't no such thing as that. The Arabs and all of the people in that area was just as black as you and me. So they lied again. Okay, no such thing as, as, as the Middle East. 
Deke, by saying the Middle East, you are now farther, falling, uh, farther discontinuing from your heritage. Exactly. By what you said in exactly. Jeremiah. Exactly, exactly. And they, and, they, and they gave us that lie, and we've ingested it. Talking about something, he's Middle Eastern. No such thing as that. All of that is the land of Canaan. All that is Africa. They just cut it up with that, what was that, that Gulf of Suez. They cut it up. The Suez Canal. That was a plot. Read it again. Luke chapter 21 and verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Let the Israelites that's in, the, that's in Jerusalem leave. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries. That's the northern kingdom tribes there. And let them that are scattered abroad like James 1 and 1 talks about. Let them that are scattered abroad, let them not come into Jerusalem to keep any feast because now Jerusalem is about to be overthrown because that was a prophecy because of the desolation. Y'all all right? Y'all get me? Y'all with me? Read. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. For these be the days of vengeance. Why did Christ say this? Because these be the days of vengeance. I'm taking you back to my original point about this truth about what happened in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. It's about to roll out now. That's the point. Read that again. For these be the days of vengeance. Christ is telling us these are the days of payback. These are the days of the consequences that Moses told you about. Thousands of years. Read. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. That all things which are written in the law of Moses might be fulfilled, meaning the curses. That's what it's talking about. The curse is about to be filled. When you go back to Deuteronomy, you read about the siege. In the 56th verse and all that, where we got so bad, we started eating our children and all of that. Because they cut us, they cut off our food supply, cut off our water, cut off everything. The siege is recorded in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The, everything is recorded there. This is what Christ is talking about. Read. No. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I don't want to deviate because I got a lot to cover. But, I, I, but go ahead, bring it I, out since you're there. Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. And the enemies shall besiege thee in all of thy gates, your leadership, and all of your opening ports where you would get food and water. He shall besiege you in that. Go ahead. Unto thy high and fenced walls come down. Because Jerusalem was surrounded by a high wall, and we trusted in those walls. Wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. And he, the enemy, shall besiege us in all our gates. Listen. Throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God have given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body. You see that? You shall eat the children. Your own children. Go ahead. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God have given thee. That is a terrible punishment to be so hungry you start eating your own children. You can't even imagine that. There's a lot of people try to make mockery out of this. Mm -hmm. They try to make mockery out of this. But who would believe that we, with our sick selves, will abort our own children for basically nothing? So we're busy having so much doubt about this here, somebody will look at us today and say, well, how could you do the things that you do? Mm. Go ahead. In the siege and in the straightness wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee. Wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee. These are not the enemies that the Lord told us to love. Like when we read in the New Testament when, it's, when Christ said love thy enemies, it ain't talking about loving your natural enemies. It's talking about the enemies among your own people. That's what it's talking about. And when it says the enemies among your own people, the reason why you would turn the other cheek on your own brother is because your brother has a conscience. If you strike me on the left cheek and then I give you my right cheek for you to strike, I'm thinking that by, by you striking me, I'm going to turn and let you hit me on the other side. It's just figuratively because I don't believe in letting nobody hit me nowhere. I'm just, just being straight, but I'm just figuratively speaking. You understand what I'm saying? When we deal with, when we deal with each other and we do something wrong to each other, and then I don't, and then you look to, to retaliate, and then you don't retaliate. I'm looking at you, so why didn't you retaliate? And then your response to me is because you're my brother. And that's going to work on me. 
because I have a conscience. Dang, this man didn't even attack me. This man didn't even jump back at me. So why is it that you didn't do that? Brother, because we brothers, man. We're the children of Israel. The, the most high is our father. And you're my brother. You're my people. So I just want you to think before you strike me again. So you know what? I'm sorry, brother. Shouldn't have done that. You have gained your brother. You cannot do that to a natural enemy. Ask Gad. Ask the, ask the North American Indians. They turned, they, they turned both cheeks, their back, and everything else to him, and the man continued to kill because he has no conscience. But the, the, but the Edomite man that, 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 that took our Bibles, raped, pillaged, murdered our people, built churches on top of bones, built churches on top of blood, then going to tell you to come in and learn about Jesus and turn the other cheek. That's not the Bible, brothers and sisters. That's not what the Most High is talking about. But thank God a new day has come and Christianity is on the ropes. <laughs> you know? Christianity and what? When I say Christianity, let me make it clear what I'm talking about. Christianity is white supremacy. 100%. Not 99 and three quarters, 8%. 100%. Christianity is white supremacy. Christianity has nothing to do with the Bible. The Bible is a black man's book. That's what you need to understand. Read. Luke chapter 21 and verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. For these be the days of the prophecies that Moses talked about. The vengeance for breaking the laws of the Most High. Like it said in Deuteronomy 28, 15. Is that, that if you break these laws, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Go ahead. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. That the prophecies that Moses wrote about, the curses, shall be fulfilled upon us. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child. But woe be unto our children. Woe be unto our women that are pregnant, that got little babies. Because the Romans are not going to spare them. So wait a minute, how come, how come turning the other cheek didn't work on that? When the Romans came in, they were chopping our people up like it was nothing. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land. For there shall be great destruction in the land. Meaning destruction upon the nation of Israel. Destruction upon our women, destruction upon our babies, destruction upon our old men, our old women. They didn't care about none of that. And it's all in the history that they forbid us to really read about. This information is in red sections of the library and all that kind of stuff, but they got the records on it. Read. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And the Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword. Listen now. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And that happened over thousands of years. Beyond that. The, the slave ships came up in the 15, 15, in the 1400s. The slave ships. And shall be led away captive. It didn't say we walked or took a plane. or It said that we were led in captivity. Right. Go ahead. Into all nations. Into all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And, the, and Jerusalem shall have bastards walking up and down of it, talking about their Jews. That's why I was using the term Gentiles there, letting you know that those are not the Israelites that are there. Now, some of our brothers have went back to try to set up a little colony and all of that. That's not who the Most High is talking about there. The people that's running Jerusalem are the bastards that the Bible's talking about. And the reason why I'm using the word bastard because it's recorded in the Bible. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 6 is recorded clearly. Ashdod is, not, is Tel Aviv. And the Most High said a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Okay? Because those are not the people of God. Those are the Gentiles that Christ is talking about here. You ain't got to read it. Read, read on. Read that again. And, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be walked upon. That's what trod means shall be walked upon by the Gentiles, by the nations, because the Israelites are not there. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. How long are they going to be there? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until their time is up. So the, the, the hourglass, the time is running out. Mm -hmm. 
The time is running out. Revelation 12 and 12. Revelation 12 and 12. This is the reason why he's acting up with us now. Trying to find Negroes to side with him. So-called Negroes. They're the Israelites that have been brainwashed. Trying to stop the prophecies of God. This, this, this demon called Vocab Malone. He's another one that's trying to stop the prophecies. And this Christian apologetic garbage. They're trying to stop the prophecies. There ain't nothing going to stop but their heart. That's right. Revelations chapter 12. These fools, these fools think that they can overthrow what God has built. And don't, and don't sleep on it. You think that IUIC was able to build because they allowed us? Think about it. J. Edgar Hoover said the number one threat to the United States is Negro unity. So this would not be here if it was up to them. God is the one that's setting this up, and God is going to make sure that it gets finished. Read. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. The white man is the devil. Having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. When I said a white man, that's another level of deception that he has given us because he's not white. Just like you're not black. You can look at your own skin and look at that in contrast to your hair and see that you're not the, your color. Even the darkest African is not black. They call it blue black. Blue is not black. <laughs> blue black. This is very dark brown. Very dark. Like a dark chocolate. Okay? And ain't no such thing as white people either. They're not pure. They're the pure devils, but they're not pure in terms of being pure as a driven snow. No. They're red, just like the Bible says. They're the Edomites that the Bible speaks of. That's what the Most High is telling you in the Bible, that they're the devils. That's the reason why the scriptures say that the devil is red. How in the world could a white man write a Bible that says that? White people lie. The minute they wake up, they're lying. You think that they would actually put that Christ as a black man in the greatest book on the planet and say that we as the white folks, we're the devils? No way. And he couldn't even stop that. He got them trapped up thinking that they're talking about, the, he got the, he got the so-called white people in the church talking about some, yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me so. And got all these Bibles available. And the Bible, they got nothing to do with none of them at all. The Bible is meant to get to you. So they all been hoodwinked. And they think they're going to stop this. And vocab sees that. He's scared to death. This is what's wrong with him. Read. Read on. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. For the devil has come down upon the 12 tribes of Israel. Why? Having great wrath. Having great wrath. It's going to tell you why. Because he knoweth that he have but a short time. How does he know? Because he's looking at you waking up. He's looking at us coming to find out that Christ is black, that we're the Israelites, and Christ is coming back to kill our enemies and give us the kingdom and put everybody in slavery. He knows that. And that's terrifying to him. That's terrifying to vocab. They're trying to figure out how to stop it. Vocab is trying to, I'm calling him out, Mark Reiser. He's trying to sound the alarm for white supremacy Christians to stop the Israelites. And it ain't stopping that. That's what's wrong with him. He's posing like he's the Negro friend. He's going to have his little radio podcast with some so-called Negro black beats playing in the background with his hat on backwards. White boy. And got Negro some of some yeah yeah he's cool he's he he's got he he he's got he's got street cred urban, urban apologies you a damn fool that man don't give a damn about the black pe the black people at all and we got the clip he he has said to that other white dude he said if we don't stop basically I'm translating what he's saying if we Christians don't rise up and stop the Israelites. We are in trouble because what the Israelites is talking about is going to take the whole planet Earth over. And everybody going to know that Christ is black. Everybody going to know that the Jews are black. Why do you think they went after Deshaun Jackson? Deshaun Jackson don't know what we know. But just because he was getting close to it, they said, we got to get him now. Stop him. Nick Cannon? Nick Cannon? They don't know what we know. 
But it said, but he's he's in the he's he's getting next to the conduit that can lead him into the truth, and we got to stop him now before he wake up. Now let's castrate him on social media. That's what's going down. You read that? Okay, all praise to the Most High. Now, let me tell you the reason why I read all of that to get to this point here. Then I'm gonna get to my lesson. I read all of that because one of the one of the doctrines, one of the lies that your enemies try to put out is to say that there's no regeneration in the Bible. They push that. I'm going to tear that behind up. There's a reason why they, they, they say that because they don't want you to know that they're going to pay for what their forefathers did to you. If we had to pay for what our forefathers did to us, what, did I say that right? If we had to pay for what our forefathers did, that right, that brought us to this mess here. The Lord shall bring you into bondage again with ships. That didn't happen to them, but that happened to us generations later. Revelation 13, 9 and 10 says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. It didn't say nothing about his sons going. It didn't say nothing about his, it said him. Meaning the same spirit that did it to us, the most high going to bring that same spirit back and put it in chains. That's what it means. Just like us. When Moses was speaking to us and he said, the Lord shall bring you into bondage again with ships. He was literally talking to us. We were just back there. We were like, what the hell is Moses talking about? Just like he just said in Jeremiah. You, even yourself, shall discontinue from your heritage. That didn't happen to Jeremiah. That didn't happen to us back during the time of Moses. We didn't go on the slave ships then. But it surely came to pass. So guess what? What they did to us is going to surely come to pass too. So they said, no, no, no. The Bible ain't talking about regeneration because we don't want to pay for what our fathers did. Let's read that wonderful gospel. Give me Revelation. Let's read that read that thing because we just read about what happened to us in Jerusalem this is these are holy words that I'm bringing out this is the gospel right this is the guy this is melody hey, you can put it. a beat to this bring it out can you dig it spit it on the turntables <laughs> you can do all of that with this <laughs> read revelations chapter 13 and verse 9 if any man have DJ Vlad play this <laughs> <laughs> If Coach, any man of vultures. <laughs> read Revelations chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, if any man have an ear, this is God talking. God says, If you have ears, listen to how the Lord is putting this. Do we all have ears, brothers? So, this is damn near a redundant statement if you look at it carnally. If you look at it, uh, what's, what's the word? Curse, uh, looking at it from a cursory point of view. In other words, you ain't thinking deep into what it's actually saying. If you look at it from a, f just from looking at it, it's obvious mm -hmm. that we have ears. So why is the Lord saying this? Because we all have ears, but we are all not using them. That's what he's saying. Read it again. If any man have an ear. In other words, I want you to use your ears this time because I want you to hear what I'm about to say because this is going to go down. Let him hear. I want you to hear what I'm about to say. Thus he, saith the Lord. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity, sure. hold, it, hold it, he that leadeth into captivity, wait a minute now, the same thing we read, and thou shalt discontinue from thy heritage, and the Lord shall bring thee into bondage again with ships, is still talking about the exact same person. Y'all all right? And we're still in captivity. Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity no he shall go to heaven shall go into captivity no he shall go into uh, he shall go and just burn up somewhere little by little by little he, he shall go into captivity that's reap what you sow so you can understand if i plant apples i'm a fool if i'm gonna look for pears mm. i'm a nut if i'm gonna look for bananas here i'm gonna plant slavery murder rape robbery torture lynchings and I'm going to expect to get the kingdom of heaven in white heaven with Uncle Ruckus. That's not going to happen. 
Read that again. <laughs> Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity. So the same ones that did the evil to us shall go into captivity. They themselves are going into captivity. That's what that means. Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword. Did they not kill our people in Jerusalem like we was reading earlier with the sword? Go ahead. Must be killed with the sword. The Lord says, listen, I want the destruction to happen my particular way. He's not going to let you use a gun. He says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. I want you to use swords on those that killed you with the sword. That's reap what you sow. That's in the newest book of the Bible. The newest, that's the New Testament. Revelation, you can't get no more New Testament than that. Christ says that he that killeth with the sword, they must be killed with the sword. That's a beautiful thing. And the Most High wants you to use that. So the sword is spiritual. You feel it. it. Ain't no fun to shoot somebody with a gun. When you get to chop someone's head off, you feel that thing. Hmm. <laughs> huh? You get to stick that blade and mix them guts up a little bit. You feel that. That's a spiritual thing. I ain't trying to scare you, my, my brother. You all right? But the, the, the Most High is a man of war. That's the reason why I'm reading it that way. Okay? Go ahead. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The Most High said, I'm, giving, I'm doing it this way because this is the faith and the patience of the saints, which are the Israelites. So the Most High is going to honor us by allowing us to put our enemies in chains and do unto them as they have done unto us. That ain't turn the other cheek. The turn the other cheek is me and you. What that snake say? <laughs> that snake that came in the house. You ever heard of it? You ever heard that story about the snake? Woman found that snake frozen in the snow. The snake is my enemy. You should know it. It's called a rattlesnake with poison and venom in it. But because it's looking sad, it's frozen in the snow. It needs to be nursed back to health. Come on into the fireplace. Let me take care of you. That's what God did to the white man when he came over here on the shores. Took care of the snake. Nurse the snake back to help. Many of them were dying from diseases and they were full of diseases when they came in. God didn't even know what a common cold was. They came over here and bought syphilis, gonorrhea, you name it, they brought it. And God still helped them. Nice snake. Pet brought the snake into the house. The woman did, as the story goes. Nurse the snake back to health. The snake getting his strength back. It was frozen. He getting his strength back, able to move. Getting to test his fangs. Huh? Getting able hungry. To, huh? Getting hungry. <laughs> the nature came out. Natural born killers. That's what I'm making reference to. She went to pet the snake. Oh, you're such a nice snake. I nursed you back to health. I'm your mama now. I took care of you. The snake, bap, bitter. <laughs> the woman started dying. What the hell? <laughs> dying. Uh, why, why, why did you bite me? Snake looked at her. Bitch. You know I was a snake. That's what the snake said. Y'all all right? <laughs> okay. That's what we need to understand. When the vocab turn around and bite us, we up there upset. When Vlad turn around and bite us, we upset. When Max Kellerman, how many of y'all heard of him? Put that video up there. Let me show you. Give me that video. I, look on our channel from last night that I put it up there. I want y'all to see this here. How many of y'all know of Max Kellerman before I show the clip? Okay. Somebody tell me about Max Kellerman. He's, a, he's what they call a news uh, sports, such as a white boy, right? Huh? So-called Jew. Huh? Hosting it. Analyst, right. That's his weird, whatever, right. So he's on the program, and he said that he was offended because Deshaun Jackson basically reposted something that said that the black people are the Jews and America going to pay for what they did to the Jews. 
So he said, I take offense with that because I'm Jewish. So he took offense against black people and fried, wanted to fry Deshaun Jackson. So he's letting you know straight up that he hates black people. Correct? Everybody's with me, right? Let me show you who Max Kellerman, let me show you how Max Kellerman pimped black people in 1994. You got it? Okay, that's enough. Huh? Got the black people in the background. Couldn't even vibe on that mess. But when it was time for the snake to bite us, he bit us. That's the point. Never trust your enemy. That ain't when Christ said love your enemies, it's two sets of enemies, brothers and sisters. Never trust your enemies, the scriptures say. The same way that iron will rust, so will his wickedness. So will his wickedness. That's God talking. Now, why is it that vocab is against the Bible? Give me Isaiah 14, 21. This is the reason why he don't like, and all of them want to get rid of, the, they want to get rid of the Bible, period. They love the Bible as long as they can fool our people. But as long as the proper teachers who no longer are hidden. Like the scriptures say, thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Now the teachers are out here bringing that word hard. And now new eyes are being brought to the Bible. People are starting to see the Bible for what it really is. They've taken off the rose-colored glasses. Now they put on the corrective lenses and they can see what the Bible is really saying. Now they say, oh, we got to get rid of it now. Here come SPLC. Oh, you're a hate group. What? A hate group because we are trying to warn our people to stay away from the people that hate us. You call us a hate group? And we ain't necessarily trying to tell them to not cohabit with you, deal with you on the jobs and all of that. But we try, but we have to teach our people to be careful of the traps that the enemy is setting for them. So here you got the wolf telling the sheep, <laughs> You're a hate group because you won't allow me to eat you. That's, the, that, that's how I look at it. I don't, I don't know if other people think the way I think, but that's how I look at them. I'm looking at a snake trying to tell me, <laughs> it's, it's, it's trying to tell, my brother's trying to tell me, don't go in the snake pit. And then they said, the man that's telling you not to come into the snake, snake pit is a hate group. <laughs> that's wild, ain't it? That's crazy. But. Our people have done such things. Isaiah 14, 21. This is a problem. This is, this, is, this is what vocab's problem is. And yes, and we don't bring this scripture out enough, but as long as there's breath in my body, I'm going to start bringing this dog on fire. I'm going to start going through this chapter. I've been waiting a long time to go through Isaiah 13 and 14. I'm going to go through those chapters. Huh? Huh? What? Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful thing. Read. This is what he's afraid of. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 21. Watch. Prepare slaughter for his children. This is what Revelation just told us. Revelation say, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Isaiah is telling you that that's slaughter. The Most High told the prophets to prepare slaughter for what? For his children. For his children. For the white man's children. That's what it's talking about. The Most High is going to give us the power to execute this just like we said in the New Testament in Revelation. The same thing. It's talking about the same thing. Read. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. For the crimes that their fathers have done against our fathers, the Most High said that we are to prepare slaughter for what they did to us in the past. That's payback. That's what you, that's what you call reap what you sow. The reason why it's using the words for the crimes of their fathers because they are their fathers, just like we are our fathers. It's hip talk. It ain't literally talking about prepare slaughter for the children that hasn't done anything. No, the Lord is telling you that the children are the ones that did it. That's what that's talking about. Y'all all right? 
Yes, sir. All right, all right. Yeah, go ahead and read that. Go ahead, bring that out, Cap. I just wanted to add that when he read Revelation 13 and 9, like I said, you reap what you sow. And that's a true statement. Y'all know we reap some stuff, reap some things that we sow, haven't we? So we know that most high is real, what he say. He mean what he say and say what he mean. Let's read Exodus uh, 21, 16. You go right along with Revelation 13 and 9. And there again, Isaiah 14 and 21. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Are we still not in the hands of our enemy? The Bible says, God says, he shall surely be put to death. That's all I wanted to bring out there. That's a beautiful, that's holy words there. I know in church you, you learn to, we, we are taught to be squeamish over revenge. We're taught to be squeamish of being saved. The Negro, think about him. We will, our people will hear the gospel. And we'll hear that Christ is coming back for you to save you from your enemies. Guess where the Negro's default mechanism in his mind go? Or what about the white man? What about him? Stockholm Syndrome is at a level that's, that you can't even measure. We, 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 we are taught to love the, our real enemies, but the enemies among ourselves, what you looking at me for, nigga? Huh? Would you, 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 you sweating me, nigga? I don't take no shorts. You take a short every week. Look at your check. Tell me I don't take no shorts. <laughs> Unreal. <sighs> Was that it? Did Isaiah that? chapter 14, verse 21. You Pre read it. All right. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Meaning they're going to be cut off completely. That's what the book of Obadiah is talking about. Okay. At the end of that thousand years, the most I said they're going to all be rounded up and set on fire. By the command of the Most High, there ain't gonna be none of them left. That's gonna be there. Ain't gonna be no need for them after that. We're gonna be in the kingdom. Ain't gonna be no need for evil. So the so the proponents of evil, the Most High don't have no more use for it. That's why he calls them the vessels of wrath. Vocab is scared to death of that kind of scripture. But let them roll up on us. That's what he's gonna get. I don't have no love for him at all. I'm going to give him the Bible. I hope, he, I hope he burst open like a snail when you pour a sword on him. That's how this Bible is to them. Okay? The Bible said this is a sweet smell to us, and it's a smell of death to them. Now, they're they, they, they reading black supremacy stuff. That's what somebody would say. Because I, the, the uh, I know the voice of Esau in our heads. It's on automatic. We hear salvation for us and automatically some mechanism kick in. Think about that. Watch your own thoughts. Y'all know what I'm talking about because I've suffered it. We've all, we have learned that kind of behavior. We have learned that kind of pathology. We have learned that kind of thinking. The minute we hear something good about us, automatically we seek the comfort. Well, what about them? Automatically, you have to refrain yourself from that kind of thinking. Talk to me. That's letting you know, you and I know that we have been definitely destroyed in our minds. Automatically, you're looking to save your oppressor. That's some stuff. That's some stuff. Christ tells us not to think that way. He said that when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. Christ said that he is to save us from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That's what Christ said. Another scripture said that it was accepted among the righteous. What did it say? Accepted by the righteous to the salvation of the righteous. We've accepted that. And we also accepted the destruction of our enemies because you can't have both. In order for you to be saved from your enemies, your enemies must be destroyed. That's the Bible. When you go to church, you can read that. Where did you get that from? Oh, that hate group, IUIC. They said that. No, uh, what did what, it say in the Bible? Oh, damn. It's in there too. <laughs> read it. 
<laughs> Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 7. <laughs> so of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous. The salvation of the righteous is the Israelites. Go ahead. And destruction of the enemies. And it was also that we accepted the destruction of our enemies. Of our enemies. Do you have what is known as an apocrypha, my brother? I was looking for my book. I got a book that talks about the, this tyrant that tried to hide the truth as he was raping and robbing and pillaging the island of Puerto Rico. We'll bring that in next week. I got to read that thing too. I was trying to see if I had a picture of it, but I don't. I don't have it with me. But I'm going to bring that information in because that, the vocab's fear and the fear of these apologetics and these Christians, T.D. Jakes, all of them, they are afraid. When I say T.D. Jakes, because he can repent. The problem is, is that he loves his master so much that he's willing to die with his master. That's what's happening. And he got to make that decision. That's up on him. I, I hate to use that kind of talk when it comes to my people, but I have to speak it the way it is. If you hold on to the scriptures, tell you about that thing. Okay? No man can serve two masters, so you're going to understand. You're either going to serve me or you're going to serve the devil. You're going to get your reward either way you go. So, where were we at? Yeah, so that was it on that, right? I don't need no more of that. Now, let me show you one more thing. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to do two parts of this here, obviously. I know I ain't going to get it all out, but I, I think it was important for me to go over what I'm going over. Y'all all right? Can y'all dig it? Um, Matthew 5.43. Matthew 5.43. Watch this. Still, again, like I said, it's kind of deep, but then it ain't that deep. But watch what I'm going to read about this here. I want y'all to pay attention. Look at the words. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Now the, the, the white supremacy that is disguised as Christianity, because it's all the same thing. Christianity is not biblical. The word Christian is in the Bible, but Christianity is not. Two different words. The disciples, the apostles was called Christian because they followed Christ, meaning the anointed ones. The anointed people of God are the Israelites. That's got nothing to do with a religion. Total madness. Okay. So read that again. Verse 44. But I say. Read 43 again. Verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Go ahead. But, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. When you went now, many of us are sitting here, and I like to deal with the psychology that comes out when these words are being read. Be truthful with me. When y'all heard this verse, immediately your mind on default went back to the old Christian doctrines. Talk to me. Y'all know it did. You had to catch yourself. You said, wait a minute. We're going to finally get the proper understanding of this verse. But when it first came out, your mind went right back to Reverend Shamchok. Reverend, what? Reverend Hoodwink. <laughs> huh? Your mind went there. Because every time, well, let me tell you something. When I was coming up, I used to hear this. My mother would go to this uh, preacher that was in New York, Reverend Shambach, black man, I believe. Was he black? Might have been the devil. I don't know. Anytime I got dragged to church, I never looked at the preacher. I was always there just to watch the people cut up, dress flying all over their head, and all that cut up, spin around, look crazy, and laugh at people. That's what I used to do. <laughs> That's what I used to do. Huh? Me and my sister, we just be laughing at the, at, at the people. Just, what the hell is wrong with them? <laughs> Run all over the church. And he had a tent on 145th Street, cutting up. Oh, man, that man could preach. All that madness. Ain't learnt nothing. Read that thing again. But when you would hear this, you know, it would, when, here's, the, here's the, the, the mind thing that I'm talking about. When you hear this, as he read it, you remember exactly where you was when you heard that wrong teaching of that scripture. Talk to me. Read it again. Let, 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 let's, let's give them a, a quick trance real quick. But, but when we do this, we can't leave them in the trance too long or they might get stuck. We've got to pull them back out. 
I'm going to just take you to the tip of the, of the rock. And I got to pull you back real quick because you put him on the edge, Satan might get him. Right. I almost lost him. I almost <laughs> lost him. <laughs> so he got to pull him back quick. <laughs> Backslide. He be gone. Huh? The sunken place. I'm going to put him on the edge of the sunken place and read this. And he'd be like, uh, so you got to grab him before he get pulled in. <laughs> read. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. Ye have heard that it have been said. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. <laughs> and hate thy enemy. I remember when I was, I'm going to tell you where I first learned this at. I learned, I was in One West, and I remember the, the brother, his name was Kakum. He might, he might someday hear this. He, well, he, he, he knows me. He went over this, and I remember the statement that he said. He said, these verses here has made our people super stupid. Meaning the misunderstanding of it. Those are the words that he used. Read it again. <laughs> he have heard. That it have been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Go ahead. But I say unto you. But I say unto you. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Oh, Lord, let you take that nightstick and just beat the hell out of me. Go ahead. Bless them that curse you. Bless. Listen to this stuff. Bless them that curse you. The white man biting you. The snake biting the hell out of you and you're busy praying for the snake. Mm. I've seen people do that. I'm going to pray. I remember I, what, 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 it was something that was going on. I don't know. I don't want to say this. Back in the days, we used to just say it on the mic, Times Square and all that. We didn't. I got to be a little bit. I got to hold it back a little bit now. But we used to say certain things. We used to let it rip. <laughs> so I can't say it now. I can't say those kinds of things. Because it wasn't, it wasn't biblical. I'm going to put it that way. So if it's biblical, it's coming out. But we used to say things like, you know, somebody come and roll up. Now, nah, let me stop. Go ahead, read, 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 read. <laughs> Verse 44. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I got to get that on thread. Go ahead. But I say unto you, <laughs> love your enemies. Love your enemies. Go ahead. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Wow, Lord have mercy. Go ahead, man. Do good to them that hate you. I got to go to the bathroom. Oh. Do good to them that do what? That hate you. Wow. <laughs> the man is cursed, currently biting you, sicking dogs on you. Beating your women up. Mm. Listen to this craziness. Your women. The man is, is touching on them. Feeling on them. Grabbing them. Beating them up. Lynching them. Here you on a tree. You get ready to get lynched. They roping you up. And they talking about some do good. What to say? Do good to <laughs> them that hate you. You're supposed to give them the rope. Mm. I forgive you. <laughs> Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. <laughs> you go with that dog on foolishness. <laughs> this this wrong teaching, like I said before, Christianity is worse than crack. I'm telling you straight up, Christianity is where I've seen people that you will break the you bring them this truth, and they say, "I see it, bro. I see it," but I just can't let go. You done broke the whole Bible. I used to spend a lot. I used to deal with brothers for hours. Especially when I first came into this truth. Like many of you. When we first come into this truth, we're chasing people with the Bible. We're trying to teach them the whole Bible in one night. Can I get a witness? Huh? You're trying to give it to them. And I remember I was with this brother all day. Had appointments. Nah, that, wait. This is important. I'm doing the work of the Lord. Got to get this verse. Giving it to him. And I was going over stuff like this, and they said, I see it, but I just, this just, I, I'm just looking at them. I said, damn. I'm from Harlem. I've seen what crack do to people. I've seen what dope do to people. This is worse than that. <sighs> I ain't done yet. They're they talking about, I forgive you. Jesus forgives you. But meanwhile, Jesus said, vengeance is mine. So who is he getting vengeance on? He getting they, vengeance on the same people that right. did him dirty. Right. They, they, they even, the question that you just asked don't even come across their mind. Because you said, because they say, vengeance is the Lord. So that means it's, ain't, it's up to me to just let you just beat the hell out of me. And just wait on the Lord to do it. That's, that's, Malcolm X referred to the church. I'm, I got to find that's part of this speech. But he referred to the Christian church as a sleeping pill. 
I only heard it once. And I heard a white man quote it, by the way. But I know that I know he said that because I heard him say language around that stuff. And I said, what does he mean by a sleeping pill? I knew it, but I wanted to elaborate on it. What did he mean that the church is a sleeping pill? Like it's some sort of sedative. Because the church is no different from the disco. I'm going to explain what I mean. We work hard all week. The white man giving us hell, giving us a short check every week. I, I take no shorts, though. But your check is short every week. If your check is messed up, y'all know what I'm talking about. You show the manager and say, listen, I've worked so many hours and I only got paid for this. And they say, okay, give me the check and I'll send it over the payroll. And you won't see that money for another three weeks. You don't get it right away. Talk to me. You're already a week in a hole. <laughs> huh? So you're not going to see the actual uh, materialization of that money you missed for at least two to three weeks. To the next, Not even the next check. Because you probably don't work that week. They won't put it onto the next one. Because they got to they gotta put it in. They got to send the, the discrepancy to payroll. D, let that be your brother on the street. Let that. Yo. Man, <laughs> he won't see the next day. You're right, exactly. <laughs> you stepped on my Jordans, nigga. <laughs> you, you looked at my woman, nigga. Well, damn, tell her to put some clothes on. What? Smoke. You want some smoke, nigga? <laughs> Y'all know what it is. Huh? I got plenty of smoke. White man comes, all of a sudden, you don't know nothing about smoke. <laughs> huh? You got all the patience you in the world. You got all the patience in the world. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just, just it's, a it's a bad situation, but it's reality. Where am I at? Where am I at? Matthew chapter <laughs> 5 and verse 44. You're running away with it. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you Ooh. and persecute you. Wow. You get this is traumatizing. That's what it, that's the word that I was looking for when you hear this and not giving the proper understanding. This is traumatizing. Just imagine you had all of these things that happened to you then you open up the Bible and read that. When you got Reverend Huckster telling you, yeah, you did the right thing by letting me beat and rape and, and do all of these things to you. You're going to get yours. You're going to get your payback in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to get black heaven. You ain't going to be up there with us, but you'll be, you be in black heaven. The damn church is segregated. You go inside the church, they got all of the white folks in one special area. Think about it. You get the poor black section. They, they, they call themselves integrating it now, but they still separated in their minds. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When they go home, they go home to manicured lawn. Huh? They leave their doors open, that kind of stuff. You got to, you got to, <coughs> you, you, you got hell to pay. You got to deal with all kind of madness when you go back home. Hmm. <sighs> Let's let's help the brothers out because I think that we left them on the tip of the sunken place. Let's pull them. Let's pull them back out now. Y'all all right? They said, "Please pull us out, man." Go, y'all. Stop! You take it too long, man. The daggone tentacles of Christianity is pulling me. It's pulling me. <laughs> Read that again. Watch this. Matthew chapter five and ver verse forty-four. Nope. Verse forty-three. You you, you got to read forty-three. I'm gonna tell you why you got to read verse forty-three. <laughs> Ye have heard. Stop. Right there. Read it again. Ye have heard. Stop. Who is Christ speaking to? The Israelites. If he's saying ye have heard, the question is, where did they hear it? Mm. They heard it in Leviticus. Brothers, yesterday was showing me that the so-called white man, because he prints these Bibles. He don't write them, but he print them. He reprint them so you can understand. And the precept is in the Bible for you to wake up. Leviticus 19 is written in there. And the people sitting in church, and they, you know, I, I remember, again, dealing with a brother that's, 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 that's been dipped in Christianity, I should say deep fried battered. 
in white supremacy Christianity, he was so deep fried, I was showing him where to go and the precepts was in his Bible confirming where I was showing him. And he still was against it because Christianity had, had fried his brain. This is your brain on drugs. That's basically what it was. His brain was fried. He couldn't even see what was actually written. Just like what we're reading here. The first line says, ye have heard. If we were not trapped in a cocoon of white supremacy, we would not have missed that. Ye have heard. The question should be like, wait a minute. Ye have heard? What is he talking about? And then the precept is telling you where to go. Let's go there. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Watch this. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt in any wise correct your neighbor. Connect your, correct your neighbor, your neighbor, your neighbor. It's talking about your people. That's the reason why it says ye have heard. So let me go a little deeper before I go deep into the breakdown. Christ said, ye have heard, right? Where did, did they actually hear that? Listen to what I'm saying. Did they actually hear that? Did they actually hear Moses saying that? Follow what I'm saying. I think you, you, you catch what I'm saying. Moses, I mean, Christ was speaking to who? Huh? He was speaking to the Israelites, right? The disciples. He said what? Excuse me. Ye have heard. You disciples have heard. What was he talking about? Go to Leviticus. Leviticus. Chapter Watch this. 19 Watch this. Verse make it clear. Read it. 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. The children of thy people is the Israelites. That ain't the catch that I want to bring. But you see, the understanding is that he was talking to the Israelites like y'all already said, right? But the point that I'm bringing up, he said that ye have heard. Did those disciples literally hear Moses say this? No. So what is Christ saying? You have heard it in generations past. Now I'm going to go a step deeper. Now, give me the scripture that says, ask thy father. What is that? Job? Is that in Job? Yeah, read that. Listen to this. Here. This is the reason why they wanted to cut off our connectivity with our fathers. Because your fathers would bring down the history from when it was said all the way up to now. Job chapter 8 and verse so 8. We're going to read Job 8 and 8 first. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Why? 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 Because we had discontinued from our heritage. And we had to be brought back to the connecting, back to the binding tie, the Bible. That's the reason why the Most High refers to us as the lost sheep. Because you are lost from where you belong. And Christ is back to redeem us, to tie us back to our fathers, the Bible, the book of our fathers, so you're going to understand. Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. For inquire, ask of the former age. The former age meaning the ages that were before you. You have to ask about that. Because when we come back, each time that we come back in generations, the information that we knew back then does not come when we come back into the new life. So you can understand. Into the new time period when you read the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. Read. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Come on. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. No, to the search of your mothers. Of their fathers. Why is it saying fathers? Because you are your fathers. In other words, learn your history. Prepare yourself to the search of your daddies. To the search of your fathers. Now, give me the other one. I'm coming back to that. I got to come back to that one again. I need that one again. Yes, sir. After this. Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. 
Remember the days of old. Remember the days of old. Go ahead. Consider the years of many generations. Consider the years of many what? Generations. Generations. Meaning not just my generation. Meaning my father's generation. His father. Gen- Consider all those years because those generations are you. Hmm. Read it again. Remember the days of old. Remember the days of old. Come on. Consider the years of many generations. Consider. Ponder on. Meditate. Study. On the years of many generations. Come on. Ask thy father. Do what? Ask thy father. So what did the beast, the real enemy do? He killed our fathers so that they cannot give us this history. That's the reason why they attacked your black fathers. That's the reason why they pumped dope in our communities to kill the black fathers. That's the reason why they miseducate the black fathers. That's the reason why they poison the minds of the black fathers in these cemeteries called churches. Because they don't want the name of Israel to come on down to the children. This is the Bible we're talking about. You've never heard the Bible before. That's why it sounds strange. I'm not lying. Everything that I'm bringing out, we're reading it, am I? Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. (laughs) We're having church now. Now you're you're in church for real. (laughs) Read. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy fathers. Ask thy fathers. I want you to, I want y'all to keep the word fathers in mind for a minute. Fathers. Ask thy fathers. Now our fathers have been cut off. Can I get a witness? Our fathers were murdered. Our fathers were railroaded. Lynched, hung, burned. Out of their mind. On dope. Locked up. Ask thy fathers. Come on. And he will show thee. And he's supposed to show you. But if my fathers are dead, how am I going to get this? If my fathers are locked up, my little boys growing up, they ain't got no daddy. How are they going to learn? No role models, no nothing. Every time I turn on the TV, I see a black man in a damn dress. That ain't no father figure. I see him cooning and cowing down like some weakling. That ain't the kind of father that my sons need. That ain't the kind of son. I mean, that ain't the kind of role model for my black men, for my black sons. So my fathers are dead. So how can I ask my fathers? The most I got the answer. Y'all all right? Is that it on that? Ask thy father and he will show thee. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Let's find out where our fathers are. Thy the elders... And they will tell thee. Thy elders, they will tell thee. That's why the elders are set up to give you what you've been missing. Y'all understand? So we understand the heavy weight of being an elder. We understand the heavy weight of being a leader. We understand that. That's the reason why when you come in here, we have to be careful how we deal with you. Because you could be Jeremiah. You could be Malachi. You could be Isaiah. You're the children of the Lord. And you could have been in any kind of foolishness, the Lord said, while all of the, for the, the Bible says there's many ways to destruction. But, only, but it's only one that findeth the true way. I know you went through hell just to make it through these doors. I know that. I don't even have to ask because we all went through it. We have drank many different kinds of philosophies, many kinds of, of different so-called schools of thought. Christianity to the sixth power. We've been baptized and fried in lies. But you made it. So if the Lord sought for you to make it, I have to understand that that special, that spirit is special. You all right? Where we at? No. Yeah. Give me Job. That, thank you. Give me Job. Job chapter 8 and verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age age go ahead and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers so if my fathers are dead where am i going to get my fathers from how am i going to find them right the bible but we're going to prove that we're going to prove that we're going to prove that and let you know why the nations the enemies are really very mad 
very mad because although they killed our fathers off, how is it that y'all are waking up? That's what's going on in the enemies at the enemy's round table. How is it that IUIC, I'm using us, because the most high going, the most high is working with all the different Israelite groups on one way or another. So I'm not making this a thing like, you know, we're the best and all that. I'm not into that stuff. My thing is about getting the kingdom and helping my brothers get there, my brothers and sisters get there. You follow what I'm saying? But they're worried that this truth. How is it that they're waking up? Harvey, didn't you deliver the dope and the guns? Yeah, I gave it to him. <laughs> I dropped it off. Well, damn it. Send some more. <laughs> okay. How is it that they're waking up? We lied. Just think about all of the evil that they, they've lied in school. They lied in the church, gave you a white Christ. Where is that in the Bible? You can just start there. Oh, he's racist. He's, he's a black supremacist. They say that we are black supremacists. That doesn't make any sense at all. White supremacy has been in everybody's mind, and the minute you're trying to offset that, you're trying to fight the enemy from killing you, you hate me because you're stopping me from murdering you. You're a black supremacist now. <laughs> black supreme in what? Mind games. And if, and if we are... Uh, if an enemy could be that comfortable in saying that to you, that, that, that uh, exemplifies the absolute uttermost disrespect. That shows you that they have absolutely no respect for your intelligence or nothing to even say that to grown men. To even say that to me. Black supremacy. I'll turn around and I'll, my, my, my women are strung out on dope. They hate themselves. My black sisters running around with blonde hair. What the hell is that all about? Brothers running around with some damn skirts on. Banging women. Ain't taking care of the children. All that evil is going on. And because I'm trying to stop the evil, I'm a black supremacist. And I'm going to allow my enemy to tell me that. I'm going to allow the snake to tell me that. Y'all all right? Read. Uh, yeah, read Job 8 and 8 again. Let me get my thought back together. Job chapter 8 and verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. So the point that I was making is that our fathers are dead. Our fathers are cut off. Our fathers are in jail dead on dope some of them are homos but they're not doing they're not doing what the bible said be that pillar to give me the information that i need as a son my fathers are not there so what am i going to do and the enemy said listen harvey we cut them off they got no help they got no nothing so we're in jubilee because we got them dead and then they see the israelites coming up huh who who where they come from how? Who? How did they get this? What country were you born in? Because <laughs> certainly you could not have been born in this country and went to my schools and come out talking about you an Israelite. Then they was asking you that? Deep? Yeah, they were asking me that. <laughs> they asked me that in jury, in, in, in jury duty in New York. I got called for jury duty, and I told them I had a problem with rendering a decision with, with, with rendering a decision based on what they call the preponderance of the evidence that was being shown in the trial. This was jury selection. I ain't never made it to the jury. I never made it. This was jury selection. When they asked you, uh, do you have any affiliation? At that time, I wasn't even in the truth. I was right before I came to the truth when this happened. I had just started a management job on Fifth Avenue. That's what, that's what my thing was. That's what my mind was. But I had bumped across a video that one of the elders from the school that I later went to that, that brought out Deuteronomy 27, 17. Give me that. I ain't going to lose my spot. Everybody's with me? This is what I remembered. I'm going to tell you the story. See, Nishan, you done went and did it. 
Man. Deuteronomy chapter 27 <laughs> and verse 17. Come on. Curse be he that removeth, removeth his neighbor's landmark. Curse be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. That was broken down to me and I understood what it meant. Read the rest of it. And all the people shall say amen. And all of the Israelites agreed that that man should be cursed that removeth another man's plot. That removeth his insignia off of his land. So I understood what that meant. So I'm saying... Well, wait a minute. And God, we trust you got on the judge behind on behind the judge. I don't know if they still they still have that in the courtrooms, right? And God, we trust behind the judge. And I'm like, if you trust in God, then what about this scripture here? And we're standing on stolen land. How the hell does that work? And you're talking about justice. I couldn't. I could not understand that. I said, what do you people mean by justice? The Bible says, curse be he that removes his neighbor's landmark. Mm -hmm. And here we are on stolen land, buildings on top of bones, buildings on top of blood. You, and and, and I, I was somewhat of a cognizant thinker back then. Still try to be. But I used to listen to a lot of things on the radio. I told, I told some of my stories about listening to certain things over the radio that was coming out with the Apollo Theater, different brothers that was bringing information out. And I had learned about the burials of black men in lower Manhattan, of a nine-year-old kid who was worked so hard that the, that the ligaments detached from the bone. Stress injuries on a nine-year-old boy. And they were about to dove, they were about to to bowl over the burial ground to build something. I forget what it was. And they found the tombs. They found the tombs and they said, stop. And they brought all that information up. I had the article. In the place where I worked, they had the article on the wall. I, I, I asked for the article. They gave it to me. I got it home somewhere. And the, and the article was in, I think it was called uh, Newsweek or something. And... Uh, and the, and the topic was only remember us. And it was a black man holding a skull of a nine-year-old boy talking about this is what happened to us. And, they, and in the writing, it talked about the stress injuries of these slaves that worked themselves to death. What child will work himself to the point, I ain't forget my point yet, what child will work so hard that the muscle detached from the bone on his own you do that if there's a gun pressed to your head. If there's a whip on your back that'll make you work that hard that the muscles detach from the bones. These were the bones that they found down there. And I'm sitting up there knowing all of this. And these people talk about justice. I didn't want to be on that thing anyway because I didn't have the understanding that when you do go to jury duty, they still have to pay you and let your job know so that you don't lose your job. I had just gotten a job. I said, well, I ain't going to lose this job. So I was like, I'm trying to get out of it. Everybody always say, when you go to jury duty, you don't want to get called. Just say you're going to let everybody go. That don't work for them. They said, no, we're going to get past that. Because people got slick. The court, they got slick. They, a lot of people were saying that and they still had to go. They still, had to, they still got drafted. Me, I came up with something different. Not that I was being slick, but I was coming from the heart. So they asked, they asked a series of questions, and they said, uh, so do you think that you could, you know, they asked you your name and all that, and then they said, um, are you affiliated with any, you know, and by this time, I didn't know anything about groups, black groups and all that, that would be considered hate groups and all that. I didn't know nothing about any of that. To be truthful, still don't. Cause we, ain't, we ain't none of that. But you get the point. That kind of climate wasn't there, but he was asking the question. He said, so are you affiliated with this? Are you affiliated with that? I guess he meant like Black Panthers or whatever, stuff like that. No, no, I'm a regular guy that go to work, you know, that kind of thing. So he said, um, so do you think that you could render a decision based on the preponderance of the evidence? And I said, I don't think so. And then he said, why not? I said, well, I know that this land is not really fair. And then I gave an example. I say, for instance, you might have a brother that's in court because he stole a loaf of bread because he was hungry. And then you have Michael Milken. I don't know if y'all know who that dude is. He's a junk bond king that, that milked Wall Street. Look, put his name up there because I keep, I keep saying that and I might be wrong. Michael Milken. Uh, Michael Milken 
in full, Michael Robert Milken, he was born, blah, blah, blah. Uh, American financial, it moved on me, financial, financier whose junk bond operations fueled many of the corporate takeovers in the 1980s. Okay? So, there you go. So, this dude was, was robbing, he, he had milk. He basically did what? What's this dude called? What's uh, uh, what's this guy? Madoff, Bernie Madoff, that kind of dude. He was that kind of dude that milked the Wall Street, milked them, robbed them with his scheming investments and all that. But anyway, the point. Well, can you get rid of that? The point that I'm make, making about that is that I was making the point. I said, well, Michael Milken can afford all kinds of attorneys and get off, and he's a damn crook. But the preponderance of the evidence won't reflect the negativity of him because he got a top lawyer. But the brother, who ain't got no money, got to get a court-appointed lawyer that ain't going to represent nothing. I mean, because he can't afford a real attorney, I'm going to send him to jail because he was trying to get something to eat. I said, I have a problem with that kind of justice. You, you all all right? So it went on because he's, you know, they're still going, they're still going on. So they said, well, that's how the courts, you know, you, you know, we, we provide attorneys, blah, blah, he's saying all of that. Then he continued to ask me again. He said, so with this new revelation of information, can you render a decision based on the preponderance of the evidence? And I said, no. No, he said, can you be impartial? That was the word he used. He said, can you be impartial? Meaning not take sides. And I said, I don't think I could be impartial because I'm going to be favorable toward the underdog because this is not a fair system. That's the point I was making. So he said, well, why do you have a problem, sir? I said, because I don't understand your meaning of justice. What? I said, you have, in God we trust, behind you on the wall, but we're standing on stolen land. And I said, Deuteronomy said, curse. He said, no, look. They called me into chambers, bro. Called me into chambers, about three or four of them, with their black robes, was talking to me. And they asked me questions like, what school did you go to? Where were you born? Stuff like that. And back then, I didn't connect it. In other words, he was saying, how in the hell do you make it to be where you are and think like this? Because our teachers in our schools would have recognized that and would have messed you up. This is not in the curriculum. <laughs> this is not in the curriculum. That's when I was reading books by Jawanza Kanjufu, that brother that wrote that book called Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, meaning how they use the system to, to, to take a genius brother. I used to do a lot of reading back then. I said a lot of reading. But dig what I'm saying. The brother talked about in the book, he said that there was a, the brother, Jawanza, wrote this book, counter the conspiracy to destroy black boys he makes a point of saying that there was a kid i can't remember his name that he wrote in the book might be fictitious but he said that when the guy came into school the first second third grades he was in the 98 percentile of the intelligence when they measured the iq black kid basically a walking genius Black man, black guy, black boy. Our kids are brilliant. Follow what I'm saying. But by the time he got to what, what the brother called in the book the fourth grade syndrome, by the time he got to that point, the teachers and, and the educational system had worked to poison his mind so bad that the only thing he thought about was sports and his dump truck. And his intelligence and his grades, everything went to the floor. So my point is, the educational system, I don't give a damn what they tell you on TV. This is why it works. They look for the bright of us. They look for the intelligent of us, the genius, the, the, the Moses, so you can understand. They look for that one that has that charisma, that have that, that ability to know how to speak, to gather people's attention. They look for that. They said, we got to deal with him now because he got the potential to be a leader. That's what they did to Dr. King. That's what they were doing. They talked about it in one of those big uh, Congress committees about why they killed Dr. King. They said, because 
people, there's people like that have the charisma, the speaking ability to draw large crowds. And they said, we don't want that. So we, they, they have little telltale posts in their society. It, rather it be in the educational system, rather it be on your jobs, rather it be no matter where you go, there's always some kind of post looking out for the intelligent of us to shear that off. So they were wondering, how did I get to that level of thinking? I ain't no genius. But that was enough to spark his interest. How did you make it all the way thinking like this here? Because we normally have Negroes like you clipped off. How did you get here? You dig it? So they watch us. That's my point. Vocab is another one of those posts. And IUIC is the genius child that's terrorizing the hell out of them. Your enemies. Y'all all right? That's the point that I'm making. Read that Job 8 and 8 again. Job chapter 8 and verse 8. You got something? Okay. For in well, hold on. Let me look. Go ahead and bring it out, Cap. Uh, go to Ezekiel uh, 39 and verse 21. He said, vocab. They know. They've been knowing. Like Dick say, <laughs> they can't stop it. Let's see, 30, Ezekiel 39, verse 21. Ezekiel, chapter 39 and verse 21. Uh -huh. And I will set my glory among the heathen. Who is the glory? We are, the children of Israel. Read on. And all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed. Upon who? The children of Israel, right? Read on. And my hand that I have laid upon them. Uh, that my hand I have laid upon them. Okay, read on. It's talking about us. Verse 22. Uh -huh. So the house of Israel should know that I am the Lord their God. I am the Lord their God. Understand that. Read on. From that day and forward. Uh huh. And the heathen shall know. And the what? And the heathen shall know. And the heathen knows. Read on. That the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Vocab knows it. Vlad knows it. They all know it. Max Kellerman, they know it. They can't hide it. They know it. Because thus says the Lord said they know. Read on. Because they trespassed against me. Uh -huh. Therefore, hid I my face from them mm -hmm. and gave them into the hand of their enemies. They know we in the hands of, of them, our enemies. Read on. So fell they all by the sword. Yes, we did. Read on. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them and hid my face from them. That's right. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob uh -huh. and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel uh -huh. and will be jealous for my holy name. Because <laughs> we're the glory of most high holy name. That's right. All praises. That was it? Yes, sir. That's all praise to the most high. So now, the phenomenon that Willie Lynch talked about. Anybody got that? That's what I should have bought. Anybody got that page that speaks about the phenomenon? Do you got your book? Hold on, brothers. I got to give it to you. I got a little bit of time. I'm going to go into, I ain't, I ain't dealt with this yet. <laughs> but I'm going to hit some of it. And then I'm going to save the, save the rest for next week. But I'm going to make sense out of this class. Y'all all right? Yeah, that's it. What you got there? No, no, no. Yeah, look, look for the page in there. I want y'all to see this here. Vocab, these judges, the courts, they all think the same way. These teachers in these public schools, you got to really think about how biased this system is. If this was truly a, a, a righteous system, why is it that, that, that we are so proportionately disadvantaged? That's by design. There's nothing wrong with us intell intellectually. There's nothing wrong with us biologically. The system is rigged. That's the point. And we know it in spirit. We know that. You know that. You know, on, on the jobs that I've worked, you know, I've worked several of them. And I knew that whenever I had to go into a particular situation, I knew that race had something to do with it. Even without it being said or spoken. You just know it. Y'all got it? You got the part? 
Could we get it on this? Let me see. Oh, you going? Oh, I see. You gonna get it? Get the part about the. I want y'all to see this here and send it to him. Just, just bear with us. I want y'all to see this here because this is what the problem is. Because the, the 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 thing is, listen, we've killed your fathers, we've killed your mothers, we've killed your language. While he's doing that, give me Psalms eighty three. While he's getting this, this so is this is this is what the enemies that are from without. This is the meaning on the outside of us. This is their terrible fear. Like the scriptures say, they should shake with terrible fear when they see us arising up. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. The what? Thine enemies make a tumult. You, these are not the enemies that Christ was talking about turn the other cheek from. This is a total different enemy here. This is the real enemy of God. Understand the difference. Thine enemies, God's enemies, make a tumult against his people. You can't love these people to stop making a tumult against us. What's wrong with our people, man? We think that we can get together and love the people that's trying to kill us. And when I say love, let me, let me say this. Let me qualify this here. Because people say, well, give me, let me give you an example. Hold that. Give me Ecclesiastes 3. I'm going to talk about this hate group thing for just a second. This is, again, this is an insult to intelligent minds for them to say that we are a hate group. Watch this. Ecclesiastes, give me the verse. Go right to the point. Give me the first verse first and then jump down to the main meat. Hmm. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Watch this now. Listen now. Watch this. To everything there is a season. Now, while you're reading that, I want you to think about something. This wicked society have worked so hard to turn the intelligence around in people's minds where they can't even see with common sense. Meaning, things that are obvious. You won't even get the real obvious understanding of words. You got black people running around talking about some, I don't want to be associated with a hate group. Ain't that something? And they, and they use and they, they take the term hate group and think it to mean something totally wild. You're the victims of hate. What do you mean you don't want to be a part of a hate group and you allow them to say that you're li because you're trying to liberate yourself from the people that hate your guts and you're trying to align yourself with people that's, that's thinking like you to liberate yourself from a hatred environment. They said that you're a hate group and you're dumb enough to believe that. You're gullible enough to believe that. But I'm going to show you that we've been duped. I'm going to show you. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Watch this. To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. The, the, the everything there is a season, the meaning there is a time for everything that's written in this chapter. The damn white man made a song out of it. Turn, turn, turn. I know a lot of people don't know nothing about that. But they made a song out of this chapter. I forget the name of the group. White group. Edomite group made a song out of this chapter. The birds. Thank you. The birds. Read. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the and heaven. There, there's a time to every purpose under the heaven. Watch this now. Go ahead. Verse 2. A time to be born. A time to be born. And a time to die. And a time to die. That's, there's a time for all of the purposes in this chapter. Give me the verse that I want now. Jump to the main meat. Verse 3. What is uh, a time to love? Verse 8. Yes. Read a that. A time to love. There's a time to love. And a time to hate. And there's a time to hate. Let's examine that. Because what, the, what your enemies have done. They have said that if you try to defend yourself, if you try to organize and come together like the Bible says, the Bible says, gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. You're not desired by who? By the hate group of America. 
that don't desire you. So you saying, okay, well, I want to come away from you because you don't desire me, which means you hate me, and I am to gather together with my own people and keep God's laws. The hate entity is telling you you're in a hate group. That's what you call no respect for your intelligence at all. Now, I'm going to go a little deeper with this thing about hate. Read it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. And a time to hate. Now, where's the verse that says about embracing, a time to embrace and all that? Where that verse at? I ain't looking at it. A time to refrain from embracing. Verse 5. Read that. Verse 5. A time to cast away stones. There's a time to cast away stones, meaning not time for no time for war. Go ahead. And a time to gather stones and a, together. And there's a time to gather stones together and fight. A time to embrace. A time to embrace. This is the part that I wanted. A time to say, I want to love you. That's what you do to your own people. That's the enemies that we're supposed to do that to our people. Embrace them. The scriptures tell us about that. That's in my lesson. I ain't going to get to it today, probably, but I want to I wanna, I wanna continue this class next week. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Are y'all going to make it your business to be here? Yes, sir. All praise to the most high, because I definitely want to finish. I got some good stuff here, but I got, I didn't get sidetracked, but I think I need to, to go down this road. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read. A time to embrace. A time to embrace? And a time to refrain from embracing. A time to refrain from embracing. Here's the snake that comes, and a snake has a history of biting and killing my children. And I tell my children, don't go near that snake. Refrain from embracing the snake. No, you're a hate, you're a hate teacher. The snake tells me that I'm a hate teacher. Read. Now give me the verse that I wanted. Well, there's more in there. I should be following you, right? Verse 5. Read. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. Come on. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Okay. Uh, verse 8. A time on, I'm to... In the wrong, oh, I'm in Ecclesiasticus. I know something was wrong. Hold on a second. I don't want to get it. Go ahead. Read. Uh, verse 8. Yeah. A time to love... And a time to hate. A time to love and a time to hate. A time to love and a time to hate. And then it says a time of war and a time of peace. But let me deal with that part, that first part. A time to love and a time to hate. Hate and love are what? Emotions. Correct? To love someone is to embrace them. To welcome them because you have an affinity with them. Because you are like them. Because they are family. You will kiss your son and daughter. You will kiss your wife and child. Because they are part of you. I love them. I embrace them. You all alright? That, that is an emotion that I can apply because it's safe for me to do so. So I can employ love to those that love me. Now, alternatively, here's a person that's trying to kill me. And I've watched how my grandchildren were killed. Or my grandfathers, let me use that term. I've seen how you dealt with my grandfathers. I've seen how you dealt with my mothers. I've seen how you dealt with my sons. My intelligence will say, I cannot embrace these people. I cannot embrace the snake. So the emotion of hate, so you can understand, will prevent you from making a fatal mistake. That's why God put that in us. Because if you look to, to get involved, you want to jump inside the fire. You've learned that fire burns. If you have not learned to hate fire when it comes to your skin, 
you will be under the misgivings of love and jump in the fire and be dead. Like my forefathers jumped in the fire, they died. My fathers jumped into the fire, they died. Somewhere along the line, some intelligence better come in and say, wait. I better use a different emotion. I can't use love now because I've seen what happened to my fathers. I've seen what happened to my forefathers. I've seen what happened to my sons and daughters. So what did God give me as an alternative to the love that would make me run into the fire? He gave me the intelligence. He gave me the emotion to say, listen, I need to put a thought in your mind for you not to go there so that you can live. Don't bring that nice snake into your home because it's going to bite you. Then it's going to look at you and say, didn't you know I was a snake? You fool. God gave us the ability to see that. So we've seen that our fathers were killed. We've seen that our fathers were murdered. We've seen that our leaders were set up and assassinated. We've seen this. We've seen that how people were railroaded. Here you lock Bill Cosby up. That old man. Tell me he raped. How many people did you rape? How many nations did you rape? And you get to walk around us with your suits on, talk about your statesmen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So I wanted y'all to understand the whole thing, what they the, the dupeness that they've used with this hate thing is that you're running around, I want to shoot everybody. That ain't the kind of hate group that the Bible is talking about. Hate is an emotion that keeps you out of harm's way. That's why God put it in us. It's not that you're running around so angry that you just want to just blow up, be a terrorist, indiscriminately just taking out people. That is not what we're talking about. Hate is an emotion that alarms you. The mama sheep tell the baby sheep, that is the big bad wolf. The mama sheep is a hate teacher. No. The mama sheep says, listen, I need to employ you as a thought in your mind to keep you from being dinner on the wolf's plate. Y'all all right? Everybody's good. So no. This hate group stuff, that can attribute to somebody else running around talking about something. I'm mad. I want to shoot up everybody. That's not what we're talking about. Intelligence is not hate. Y'all understand that? What would you say to 2 Corinthians 6.17? Get that. Second Corinthians six seventeen. What would you say to this? Second Corinthians chapter six and verse seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. They would call Paul, which is basically quoting Christ. Paul said, "I say the truth in Christ; I lie not." So the words that Paul is speaking is actually coming from Christ. Christ through Paul says what? Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from among them. Go ahead. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. Saith who? Saith the Lord. Saith the hate group. Saith the Lord. Saith the black KKK. Saith the Lord. Saith the black supremacist. Saith the Lord. You see that? That will be deemed as hate speech. So we're not a hate group. We're a sensible group. We're a spiritual group. We're the, we're the Israelites that the Most High talks about in the Bible. We're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. That's who we are. And because of that, like Christ said, that ye shall be hated of all nations. So the whole world is a hate group against his people. That's what Christ said. Ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's why they try to make us 
believe that we are a group within ourselves and for us to be disassociated with each other. I'll show you that. That was it on that, right? And touch not the unclean thing. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will separate you. And I will receive you. And I will reject them. That's Christ talking. Read on. Verse 18. And will be a father unto you. And I will be a father unto you because your fathers are dead. Mm. So I have to be your father. Go ahead. And ye shall be my son, sons and daughters, save the Lord. Read Almighty. the most high going to bring us back to where we belong. And I will be your sons and daughters. Say and they, I mean, I will, what does it say? And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. How come they don't read this in church? This is really, this is really sickening. I've even seen the enemy take videos that we've done. And omit the scripture purposely and try to get, get us in the middle of an emotional response or something and say, look at him. I've, I've, I've seen them do this for years. Even back at One West, they got one, of, they got one of our tapes when we were teaching. And when the scriptures came, they turned the volume down purposely. And I'm looking at it. The volume went down. So you couldn't even hear. The brother was holding the Bible up. I remember the video clear. The brother was holding the Bible screaming. And you heard the silence, nothing. You just think he's holding a book. And then when he said, you white folks, you going to get it? You going to get it? You going to get it? Because the Bible said that you heard that all day long. But when it came to him reading it, you didn't hear it. Editing demons. Why? To deceive you. Here's a snake editing your videos and going to tell you that we are the hate group when we are the victims of hate the fathers so our fathers the scriptures say ask your fathers but our fathers have been knocked off killed murdered off the scene so where do we go and god said that he will receive us let's find out how malachi chapter 4 malachi chapter 4 just like we read about jeremiah the rest of our father, forefathers went into captivity, lost our heritage. You coming back into these doors, you could be Jeremiah. You could be Moses. You could be David, Solomon. The different spirits back then. You want to start at five? What are we reading? Malachi 4 and... Start with the fourth verse. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 4. Remember ye... The law of Moses, my servant. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. This is the prophet Malachi speaking about the Israelites. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb. So the Most High wants us to remember the words that Moses gave us back during the time coming out of Egypt in Horeb, in the wilderness. Read. For all Israel... With the statutes and judgments. With all, to all Israel with the statutes and the judgments. The Most High said, what the first part of the verse said? Remember ye. Remember. The Lord said, I want you to remember. Didn't we read that earlier? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your fathers. But wait a minute. My fathers are dead. How am I going to ask them? They've been murdered. They've been castrated. They're locked up. They're on dope. They're homos. They're this, they're that. How am I going to ask my father? He's drunk. He's, he's overdosed on heroin. How am I going to ask my father? Read it again. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses. my Re ser Remember ye the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb. Which I commanded unto Israel. Go ahead. For all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The Lord says, listen, although your fathers are dead, I got you, Israel. Read that fifth verse again. Verse five. Behold, 
I will send you Elijah the prophet. I will send you Elijah the prophet. Watch this. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What is the coming and the grateful day of the Lord? Please read verse 1 for me, please. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. That's the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is destruction to our enemies that we are going to be happy to accept. For behold, the day that... Read it again. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. What is the prophet uh, Malachi describing? He's describing nuclear fire. They did not have weaponry nowhere near the, the uh, proximity of what we're reading here. He said there's going to be a day that's going to feel like you're inside an oven. How in the world could the prophets write that down? Because the Lord had to show that to him in his mind. Give me that in Peter. Hold that. Give me that in Peter. They wrote as they, as they were moved. Watch this. Second Peter's chapter one and verse twenty one. For the prophecy came now. Uh, back up before that. Give me the verse before that. What verse, verse twenty. Yeah. Knowing this first. Right. That the, no prophecy of that's the scripture. That's what I want to write there. No. Listen now. Read it again. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures that's in the Bible is of any private interpretation. So God told these men what to write, and they are not subject to man's own interpretation. I want you to understand what this is saying, because it means that you have to go precept upon precept to get the understanding of what it's talking about. Read. For the prophecy came not in old time. So the scripture is talking about the what? The prophecy. The scripture is talking about the prophecy. For the what? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. No, the prophecy did not come to Malachi by Malachi's will himself. God put that in Malachi's head. Read that statement again. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. For the prophecy did not come to Malachi because Malachi wanted it to come there. No. Go ahead. But holy men of God spake as the as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But holy men of God spake, meaning they wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost that told them what to write. So you can understand. That's what it means. These men were told to write down what they were writing down. You had the prophets that was writing stuff and they got sick because of stuff. Give me that in Habakkuk. Most I was showing visions of all kinds of things, and some of the prophets got sick because it was too much for him. He said, rottenness entered into my bones. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 16. When I heard, my belly trembled. When I heard the destruction that the chapter is talking about, the prophet, who are we read about? Ha Who's this? Habakkuk. Habakkuk, Habakkuk is, is talking about the destruction that the Lord showed him in this chapter. This whole chapter is talking about, the whole book is talking about the destruction. And he, Habakkuk was writing it down, and, and, and God was showing him this stuff in his mind. Read, read it again. When I heard, my belly trembled. When I heard the visions, my belly trembled. Go ahead. My lips quivered. My lips quivered. Go ahead. My lips quivered at the voice. My lips quivered at the voice. He heard, he heard powerful statements. He heard the voice of God in the visions. Go ahead. Rottenness entered into my bones. Rottenness entered into, you see, he was so scared. Rottenness entered into his bones. That's some deep felt fear. Rottenness entered into his bones. Go ahead. And I trembled in myself. And I trembled in myself because of those terrible visions that he was seeing. That was well beyond his comprehension. Go ahead. That I might rest in the day of trouble. He said, Lord, if I make it to this day of trouble, please be with me. Because if I have to see, if I have to experience what you're showing me, Lord, I'm going to need you to be with me. Go ahead. When he cometh up unto the people. When the most high, the angels and the chariots come up unto the people. Listen, this is what Habakkuk saw. 
Go ahead. He will invade them with his troops. God will invade the enemies with his troops. So he saw a galactic battle. Mm. He saw the angels coming out the sky in their V formation. Isaiah talked about it as well. Give me that. Isaiah uh, 5 and 31, I think it is. Or 31 and 5. I think it's 31 and 5. Hold it. 31 and 5. Yes. This is what Habakkuk saw. Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 5. As birds flying, so will the... So will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. As birds flying. Birds fly in that V formation. God had that. The Air Force do it now, but God had it in the Bible. Mm. The birds fly in that V formation. That's military maneuvers. God did that. Hell, you talking about Esau's military? God's military. Man, that was a beautiful sight. As birds flying, what would the Lord do? So will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. So will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Come on. Defending also, he will deliver it. And defending also, he will deliver Jerusalem from the hand of all that hate us. Go ahead. And passing over. And he, passing over. He will preserve it. He will preserve it. And passing over. And passing over. Our deliverance, like the Passover, and passing over, he will deliver Israel like he did before. Give me Jeremiah 16 and 14. Uh, Habakkuk saw all of this because it's not a private interpretation. So the Lord showed Habakkuk what he showed Isaiah. He showed Isaiah what he showed Habakkuk. He showed What's written in Malachi, the day that shall burn is an oven. They all saw this and are scared of the death. Rottenness entered into their bones because they saw this thing. And there was nothing around that even came close to that reality. So you can imagine what kind of men these were. Read Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, save the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth. That brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Why? But the, the, hold it. The day's gonna come when what when the, the Lord he said, The day shall come when it shall no more be said, I am the Lord that have taken the children of Israel from the bondage of Egypt. Because today they're still talking about the whole world is still talking about when we were delivered out of Egypt. Are they not? They show it every year on the so called Ten Commandments with that white man playing Moses. But y'all get the point. They're still talking about the great deliverance that the Lord did for the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. Everybody still remembers that. Why? Because the Lord hasn't done anything super heavy beyond that. But this going to change that. Read the next verse. Verse 15. But the Lord liveth. But this is what they're going to say. That brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And from all the lands, whether he had driven them. Then that's going to be done through nuclear fire and nuclear war. That's what that's talking about there. So the Lord said, that's going to make, you're going to, that's going to make us forget about the deliverance from Egypt. Because this was going to be so galactic. And nobody's going to be talking about what he did in Egypt. Because this is going to surpass that by every measure. How he's going to deliver us from his. That's what Psalms 91 is talking about. Give me that. Psalms 91. These filthy Christian churches should have told you that your, your deliverance is mighty. With these lying, sick pastors. Got the people of God sitting up in there thinking that they're some slaves. Psalms 91 verse 5. Psalms chapter 91 and verse 5. These, the prophets saw all of this. That's how they were writing. David wrote down. Asaph, whoever's the uh, man that wrote this here. What is it? Is it Asaph? David? Uh, Does it say? No, not right here. In the first okay. Place. Read. Psalms chapter 91 and verse 5. Thou should not be afraid for the terror by night. Yeah, nor everybody got it? Psalms 91. Psalms 91. I'm still talking about the terrible visions that the prophets saw as they were moved by the Holy Spirit to write these things down. 
Read Psalms chapter 91 and verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. That's us because we are the ones that dwell in the secret place of the Most High and we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's verse 1. Okay, so the Lord says you shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Did you read that yet? Nor for the arrow that flies by day. That arrow is talking about nuclear missiles. That's what it's talking about. It's the next verse called clear, straight up, prove it. So you got to imagine the prophets are writing down an arrow that's going to fly and bring destruction. What kind of born arrow does that? None. But a nuclear missile is what they saw in their mind. They saw that. Read verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. So we ain't worrying about COVID-19. We ain't worrying about AIDS. We ain't worrying about none of that because we trust in the Lord. Right. And if the Lord takes us off the scene because of it, it's God's will. I ain't worrying about nothing. I'm still coming back. And when I come back, I'm coming back with a chain to hang my enemies. Read. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Nor for the what? The destruction that wastes at noonday. What's going to cause that destruction? That arrow. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Listen to the destruction afterwards. Come on. A thousand shall fall at thy side. The prophets are saying that when that destruction came, I saw a thousand men fall at one side of me. Rottenness entered into my bones. They ain't never seen anything like this before. Read, and 10,000 at thy right hand. 10,000 people fell on my right side. All at once, boom. Go ahead. But it shall not come nigh thee. But how is it all this destruction is happening around me and I'm not getting hit? Because I'm in the chariots of God. That's what Revelation 11 and 11 was talking about. Let's go back there. Revelation 11 and 11. Revelation. This is what vocab the demon is worried about. This is what the apologetics and the white supremacy people disguised as preachers are about. Negro preachers are white supremacists pushing that crap on our people called Christianity. Read Revelation chapter 11 in verse 11. And after three days and a half. And after 350 years. That's where we're at now. The spirit of life from God enter into them. That's the reason why you're waking up. This is the spirit of Elijah coming back in the people. That's what we're reading. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet. And they stood upon their feet and they said, how did you break through all of the evil that we plotted against you? That's the phenomenon. I almost forgot my point. That's the phenomenon that our enemies were worried about. Give me that. Hold that. We're coming back to this. Yes, sir. Give, pull that up there. This is what your enemies are worried about. Listen to this. Continually through the breaking of uncivilized savage niggers by throwing the nigger female savage into a frozen psychological state of independence. That's what they told our sisters. They run around talking about some independent. What that song was? Independent the, but, but, uh, what was that thing? Independent woman. And then that was what Destiny's uh, Child. Yeah. Beyonce and them and the independent. All that. Yeah. That was to break up the family. That's what J. Edgar Hoover was concerned with. He said the number one threat. To the prosperity of the United States is Negro unity. Can you can, can you believe that? He said that if black people are unified, that's a threat to the United States. The Hoover said this. Can you believe that? So if that's how he's thinking, that means that means the thing. Give me Sirach. You stay there. Give me because I don't. I'm going to do any places. Give me Sirach chapter twenty-five and one. Watch this. He said unity. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse yeah, 1. You, you go back where you was at. He's got it. Come in, on. In three things I was beautified. Listen good. And stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Back it up. Read it again. In three things I was beautified. Give me Hoover. Put the devil up there. Give and me Hoover, the thing I posted last night. Put it up there on the screen. In three things I was beautified. And stood up beautiful, both before God and men. So the three things that the prophet is about to bring out was beautiful before the eyes of God, and it is also beautiful before the eyes of man, righteous men. It's beautiful to us. Listen, go ahead. The unity of brethren. The unity of brothers is beautiful before the eyes of God. 
The unity of brothers is beautiful before the eyes of man. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Love my neighbor as I love myself. The Lord said that that's beautiful before man and before God. That's beautiful. Go ahead. A man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together is beautiful before the eyes of God and before the eyes of righteous man. Those three things are beautiful. The so-called white man hates those things. That's right. He don't want to see our families united. Teaching our sisters, talking about some independence. Abort your children. Separate the man and the woman. Welfare laws was to push the man out of the house in the 70s. Break up the unity of the family. Mm. They don't want that. They love the disunity. The unity of brethren. They don't want that. What was the other one? Love thy neighbor as thyself. No, we want you to hate yourselves. Black on black crime, we love that. That's what the enemy said. Put it up there. Hoover. Look at what this demon said. When J. Edgar Hoover. Let me read it because I want it loud. When J. Edgar Hoover was asked what in his opinion was the single greatest threat to the United States of America. He responded, Negro unity. This is the FBI director. He said, Negro unity is the greatest threat to the stability of America. So what were we brought over here for? So what we just read out of that Bible, read that thing again. Revelations. No. The, the book the Sirach. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 1. And three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren. The unity of brethren is beautiful before God, but it is absolutely hated by our oppressor. They don't want the unity of brethren. They don't want what Zephaniah 2 and 1 said, come together. Oh, nation not desired. They're going to tell you, no, that's a hate group that you're about to join in. Stay with us so we can continue to kill you. So we can continue to divide your families up. So we can continue to sow, push dope on your sons and daughters. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. We don't want the love of neighbors. Here's some guns. So that you can settle your little stupid disputes and kill each other. You looked at me wrong, nigga. I don't take no shorts. Well, ain't your check short? Nigga, that's the white man. Don't worry about that. But nigga, I'm killing you. Go ahead. A man and a wife that agree together. They love broken families. Mm. They hate to see the black man and the black woman together in unity. I know they hate that. They hate to see our brothers and sisters united together. A beautiful black family. A beautiful quote unquote Hispanic family. They hate that. Yes, that's right. But that's a threat to this wicked system. That's why the Lord said going to burn it up. Thank God for that. Thank God for that thing. Go back to my bombs. Shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need the phenomena. That's what I needed. Yeah, read that. Thank you. I got too much going on. <laughs> this is about to come on. I know I got to get it in there now. Come on. Give me my phenomenon again. Huh? Then the bombs. Then we're going to end it. Y'all all right? I'm going to read this here. It says, continually through the breaking of the uncivilized savage niggas. Now, they, you might say they don't talk this way now, but this is how they think. It says, by throwing a nigga female savage into a frozen psychological state of independency, she thinks that she could go somewhere without a man. The hell is this? But the devil made her think this way. You don't carry the seed for the nation. We do. It says what? It says, by killing the protective male image, you black men. That's what it's talking about. An endangered species like the brother writes in his book. All of the cycles of evil is, is spun down on us for us to destroy each other. So they love this destruction. They said, they said that, and by creating a submissive, dependent mind of the nigger male slave, 
That's what they made us. We can't move without Massa. We can't. We don't want salvation if Massa ain't on it. He said, by us creating this, he said, we have created an orbiting cycle that turns on its own access forever. They believe in their politics. Vote for Biden. Vote for Trump. None of them give a damn about you. You basically, you got Beelzebub running. You got Satan running. You got Lucifer and the devil. Whichever, level, whichever way you pull the lever, you're still getting Satan. You go in the booth. You pull that thing back. You hear that. Whoom. You think you did something. <laughs> it says, this will continue on an orbit that turns on its own axis forever. Unless a phenomenon occurs and reshifts the position of the male and female savages. The phenomenon is what they are afraid of. The phenomenon is the Bible. That's what the problem is. How did you come to think this way? We set all these cycles up. To make sure that you never come to this guy. How did, what school did you go to? Where did you learn this? Who? What? When? Why? How did we miss it? Fire somebody, damn it. <laughs> That's what's up. Now, let's get my scripture back. Can y'all post that picture right quick while he's getting that scripture? Now, just sent to y'all. Yeah. Revelation. Yeah. Revelations that. chapter 11 and verse 11. And after three days and a half. The spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. A great fear fell. No, up. read it again. We got to read that right. Come on. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. That's the phenomenon. Go ahead. The spirit of life from God entered into them. And man, once again, became a living soul. You're the atoms that's being reborn again. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet. And they stood up like men. Go ahead. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now go back to Malachi. I got to finish that up. Malachi. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. Right. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. So that deliverance. I'm, not, I'm sorry. Go back to Revelation. I need more than that. I need the next verse. This is what the prophet saw. So they saw us standing up after, after the spirit of life from God came. Revelations chapter 11 and verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven this saying. This is why Psalms 91 said what it said. When it said that, that 10,000 fell at his right hand and 1,000 fell at his left hand. And he said, but it shall not come nigh thee because the prophets, the men was being taken up by the chariots of God. So when we were being beamed up, we saw the destruction of our enemies. That's what that's talking about in Psalms 91. Now read it. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. That's the chariots. So the rottenness into my bones because I saw chariots come down. I saw the V formation and all that deliverance. That scared the hell out of the prophets. Go ahead. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And they descended up to heaven in a cloud. That's what Psalms 91 was saying. Because it did not come near thee. Go back to Psalms 91. There's more I need in there. Psalms 91. Listen. Psalms 91. Psalms. 91 and 5. Chapter 91 and verse 5. Six verse, I mean. Come on, six. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. That's what we was reading in Revelation. Read. A thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Go and ahead. Ten thousand at thy right hand. And ten thousand people going to fall on your right hand side. Listen. But it shall not come nigh thee. Because they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. The prophets saw all of that. Go ahead. Only with thy eyes. That's the part that I want to write there. Only with your eyes shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked. Only with thine eyes we're going to see our enemies get destroyed. He said, but it shall not come now. You, why? Because you're going to get taken up. These brothers saw this when they had no kind of weaponry to understand that at all. That's what caused rottenness to enter into their bones because they saw this stuff. And it scared the hell out of them. Now, go back to uh, Malachi. Mal give, me, give me Isaiah 13 and 6. Isaiah 13 and 6. Because it's talking about the day of the Lord. Isaiah 13 and 6. 
Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 6. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. We're not howling because we want the day of the Lord. But our enemies are going to howl. How means terror. How means great fear. How means destruction. So that's a howling for them. It's a howling for your enemies. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Come on. It shall come as a destruction from the... The, the day of the Lord shall what? It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. The day of the Lord is bringing destruction upon our enemies. And salvation to the people that believe the Most High, the Israelites. So the destruction is what God is bringing. That's what the prophets were writing down. Now go back to Malachi. I'm going to close it up after this. This is what the nations are afraid of. And they notice because they see the prophecies coming to pass. And just like the scriptures say that they, that they are moved with terrible fear because they see this. Because they know that they have but a short time. Because he's looking at you waking up and wondering and worried. Go ahead. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. It shall come as a destruction from God. That's what we just read in Isaiah. Read. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, stubble meaning burnt up. 10,000 at thy side and 1,000 at thy right hand, 10,000 at thy other side. And but it shall not come nigh me, nigh thee. Why? Because they're going to be stubble burned up by that nuclear fire that the first verse was telling you about. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Now jump down to verse 4. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 4. So the Lord wants us to understand the promise. He wants us to understand that his promise is not slack. Like it says in Peter's. He wants you to understand that he's bringing this destruction. So in our understanding, he wants us to get this. Read that. Remember ye the law of Moses. But you Israelites, I want you to remember the law of Moses. Go ahead. My servant. My servant. Come on. Which I commanded unto him and Horeb. Read. For all Israel with the statutes and judgments. So this is what I want you Israelites to know. Go ahead. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the Most High sent the spirit of Elijah back in these times. That's the reason why you're being welcomed home right back now. Because the spirit of Elijah has already come. That's the reason why you're hearing this. We're going to prove it. You ain't got to look at me and say, what is he talking about? He's sounding like some crazy conspiracy. You ain't going to be able to say none of that when I finish reading this. Read. Verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the spirit of Elijah that came back now taught this truth and this truth began to spread. And the demons saw it spread and it scared them to death. And it said what? Read it. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. What is the heart of thy fathers? The Bible. This is what the scriptures was talking about. Search your fathers. Our literal fathers are dead, but our fathers is in the Bible. That's what's being turned back to us now. And our enemies are scared to death. And I'm glad they're scared. Read. In the heart of the children to their fathers. And the mind of the children is being turned back to the Bible. That's what's talking about. When does he have to do this? Read. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I have to wake up the one third and 144,000 before I bring the bombs. Lest I come and smite the earth with the curse that's written in the first verse. I have to wake up the 144,000 and the one third. That's what Revelation the seventh chapter is talking about. The 144,000 or when the saints go marching in these dumb stupid Christians thinking that's talking about them. The saints go marching in as the Israelites. The saints are the Israelites. And the one third is being spoken of in the ninth verse when it says it came out of all nations, all tongues and kindreds and all that because the Israelites were scattered abroad in all nations. That's what Luke told you. That the children of Israel will be led into captivity under all nations until the time of the Gentiles is done. That's what we're reading here. So our time is coming. Our time is coming. Our time is coming. Thank the Lord for that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. 
We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.